In this alternate version of Earth, New York has been replaced by New Rome. The city is controlled by elite families who claim to follow strict moral codes and values, but in private, they indulge in forbidden pleasures. The rest of the city lives in poverty. On top of a very tall building, architect Caesar is about to jump. Suddenly he stops time and simply steps back. After staring at the ground and the terrifying height, he activates time again and the city continues to live. Meanwhile Mayor Cicero is upset because the radio keeps talking about his financial problems and his daughter Julia has appeared on a photoshoot without clothes. After a night spent partying, Julia is trying to go home but she finds the road blocked because Caesar and his team are about to demolish a building. When the explosives go off, Caesar stops time to admire the explosion. However Julia isn't affected by his power and she also gets to see the frozen demolition before he makes time advance again. Sometime later Caesar wins a Nobel Prize for inventing Megalon, a revolutionary building material. His popularity grows every day and it annoys Cicero, whose numbers are constantly falling on the polls and sees Caesar as a rival. One night all the important people gather for a special event at the demolition site. This event is covered by Wow, a very ambitious journalist. Caesar's cousin Claudio is acting like a clown and is scolded for embarrassing the family by his uncle Hamilton, the director of the National Bank. Hamilton is also worried because rumors say Claudio and his sisters are in a naughty relationship. Cicero announces they'll build a very advanced casino and the big moment is ruined by more of Claudio's antics. The announcement is interrupted by the arrival of Caesar, who reminds them he's the chairman of the design authority. He wants to demolish and rebuild the whole city as a sustainable utopia using Megalon and gets keeping interrupted by Cicero, who wants realistic goals and not dreams. An argument ensues and Caesar begins criticizing the system for only caring about rich people, so Cicero retaliates by pointing out that Megalon is unstable and unsafe to use. Since Caesar keeps going, Cicero brings up Caesar's wife, who was poisoned and whose body disappeared. Cicero had been the prosecutor in the case and he had been sure Caesar did it, but Caesar was acquitted and now he calls Cicero a slumlord. This causes Cicero to freak out and security has to drag him away while Julia tries to keep the press from taking pictures of her father to no avail. Afterward there's a fashion show and Claudio gets jealous because all the women in the crowd keep talking about Caesar. When Caesar goes home, he finds Wow waiting for him. She's tired of being a mistress and her career is in a slump, so she wants him to make their relationship official. Wow even says she loves him, but Caesar can only think about his dead wife and leaves. Then Wow turns on the TV to watch her interview with Hamilton, noticing that he kept flirting with her. The next day Julia visits Caesar at his office after sending him a letter to discuss what happened to her father. She notices that there are many empty bottles around and even medicine, indicating Caesar isn't mentally well. Caesar doesn't like Julia because she's spoiled, entitled, and has no goals in life, he explains he likes the company of people who actually think. This irritates Julia so she reveals she saw him stop time and wasn't affected. Now Caesar finds her interesting and shows her a model of his utopia, asking her to walk through it with her eyes closed. Julia sees people living a perfect life in harmony with equal opportunities for everyone and finally understands Caesar's vision, so she wants to help him. Later during a parade, Julia tells Cicero that she'll be working with Caesar, and Cicero calls her a traitor. He gets even more irritated when the cops pause the parade just so Caesar can cross the street on his car. That night Julia reads all the files and articles about the murder case of Caesar's wife. She had been poisoned with an overdose of insulin and the car had been found deep in the river. In the middle of the investigation, her body disappeared. Julia becomes so desperate to know what happened that she starts following Caesar around town. Claudio is out too and sees what Julia is doing, so he begins taking pictures as he follows them too. After driving for a while Caesar's car makes it to a shady neighborhood, where he sees injustice everywhere manifesting as images of falling statues. Then he stops to buy flowers, which confuses Julia. Minutes later Caesar goes inside a mysterious building, where a security guard turns off the alarm lasers to receive him. Caesar then brings the flowers to his wife's body, which is being taken care of by a team of gentle women. However when Julia follows him she finds Caesar alone because this is all his imagination. Overwhelmed by Caesar's everlasting love for his wife, Julia decides to leave. The next day Caesar goes to the top of the tower to watch the city and take notes for his plans. Julia comes along and asks him which institution is the most important to preserve in his utopia, to which Caesar answers marriage. For the next few weeks, Wow spends lots of time with Hamilton and they end up getting engaged. On the night of the wedding, Wow gifts Hamilton his very own statue. Julia attends with Caesar, who notices the protesters nearby holding up signs against him, but he ignores them. Reporters keep asking him about Megalon and its possible danger yet Caesar continues to joke while assuring them it's perfectly safe. In fact pop star Vesta arrives wearing a dress Caesar made with Megalon, which uses tiny cameras to make it look it invisible. Everyone loves Vesta because she promises to stay chaste until marriage. When Cicero arrives, the whole crowd boos him. Since this is New Rome, instead of a modern party they have a celebration inspired by the old Roman Empire, including a chariot race and gladiators fighting. Julia is interviewed by some young students and learns there already are rumors of her dating Caesar. Speaking of Caesar, he spends the night smoking, 
drinking, and consuming a variety of substances, so everything is a psychedelic blur. He signs autographs and let women flirt with him, but he doesn't return any of it. Julia follows him around trying to rein him into no avail. While some eccentric clowns finish their show, Claudio bribes a producer to play a video he's brought at the right moment. Then it's time for Vesta to sing while people donate money to support her chastity pledge. Her performance is interrupted by Claudio's video appearing on the big screens, showing Caesar and Vesta doing the dirty and getting caught in the act by paparazzi. This causes a big uproar and bodyguards have to take Vesta away before the angry crowd riots, starting a fight on the stage. Cicero makes a speech that gets ignored while the guards use even more violence to try to calm the crowd down. Eventually the anti-Cicero signs make it to the stage. Meanwhile Caesar tries to escape through the back door and a man punches him, so he ends up in a fight as well while he keeps hallucinating. Because of all the substances Caesar consumed, it's easy for the other man to knock him down. Julia finds him and takes him away in his car, but they're stopped by the cops. Since Vesta is a minor, Caesar is arrested and kept in custody. In his cell, Caesar tries to stop time and discovers he can't. That night Julia goes to the city archives with a friend and they find some paperwork that proves Vesta lied about other things too, she's not a minor, and she wasn't even born in New Rome. The next day Julia goes to see her father and shows him Vesta's birth certificate to save Caesar. However Cicero destroys it, saying Caesar may be innocent legally but not morally. A frustrated Julia leaves after announcing she'll just get another copy. Afterward Julia goes to Hamilton's house and is received by Wow, who stops the elevator to threaten her. She reminds Julia that Hamilton is hers but so is Caesar. Claudio is also visiting Hamilton since he's trying to become the heir of the bank, but Hamilton suspect Claudio was involved in the video prank. Soon the media is covering the issue of Vesta's real age, they also present forensic proof that the video wasn't real and it had all been a setup. After Caesar is released from jail, Julia visits him on top of his tower. He's sad because he lost his power and finally admits that all his mental issues are caused by his guilt. Caesar didn't kill his wife, but he still feels responsible for not taking good care of her. Julia comforts him and when they hold hands, Caesar can finally stop time again. Then they kiss, marking the beginning of their new relationship. Weeks pass and Caesar keeps himself busy by working on his project and spending time with Julia. Eventually he tries introducing her to his mother, but the old lady is senile and doesn't understand what's going on. When the couple is alone in bed, they play around with the effects of frozen time. Meanwhile the lower class hates Caesar more every day for all the buildings he's destroying to build his dream city. Desperate to bring his cousin down, Claudio joins the protest to add fuel to the fire. Soon news of Claudio's plans reach Cicero, who asks his assistant to take care of it. One night Cicero receives terrible news, a Soviet satellite is falling at great speed and will soon land on New Rome. Unfortunately they don't have the means to stop it so the locals can only watch in horror how the satellite crashes on their city, destroying most of it. This terrible incident gives Caesar the chance to work on rebuilding the city without any obstacles in his way. He loses himself in his job, playing with time to try to look into the future and design the perfect utopia. After many days of endless working, Caesar is brought out of his trance by Julia, who announces she's pregnant. Caesar is very excited and wants to get married but Julia turns down the idea, explaining that Caesar's conscience would never forgive him because he still sees himself as married to his dead wife. Sometime later, the couple invites Julia's parents to their new home, which was built following Caesar's advanced designs. Cicero and Caesar keep on arguing while playing cards, so Julia has to scold them like children. She uses that moment to announce her pregnancy and her mother is delighted, but Cicero is upset and leaves without a word. Julia is left devastated, thinking her father hates her. In the meantime Claudio continues to be the leader of the poor, inspiring them into more protests and riots against Caesar and his utopia. The man Cicero sent to stop him died during the satellite crash, so there's nobody to stop Claudio now. A few days later Cicero visits Caesar to ask him to break up with Julia. In return he offers a signed confession admitting that he had known Caesar's wife self-deleted but he prosecuted Caesar anyway to get rid of him. Cicero even promises to support Caesar in public, but Caesar turns the offer down. Afterward Caesar meets with Wow, who says she can steal the bank from Hamilton and give it to Caesar so they can be together. However Caesar turns this offer down as well. As revenge, a furious Wow decides to freeze all of Caesar's accounts. On the news, reporters keep discussing if Melodon is truly safe and attack Caesar's image. One night a kid approaches Caesar to ask him for an autograph, but it's a trick to come close enough and shoot him in the head. For the next few hours Caesar's mind is stuck in an endless hallucination. Julia immediately takes him to the hospital and the doctors consider the option of rebuilding his skull with Megalon. Meanwhile it's revealed that the child had been sent by Claudio's henchman, but Claudio is angry because this incident has made Caesar look like a martyr. The procedure to fix Caesar's skull with Megalon goes well, but it'll take some time for him to fully recover. Julia comforts him after the operation and while having painful hallucinations Caesar shares what happened the night of his wife's death. She came home ready to announce big news, but she saw something that made her jealous and she ended up self-deleting in the river. The poison thing had all been a lie from Cicero, who also hid the fact she had been pregnant. 
Caesar had tried to follow his wife out and saw her jump, afterward he discovered the principal behind Megalon trying to save her. As soon as he can walk again, Caesar goes to see Wow to ask about his bank accounts. Wow tries to threaten him, but Caesar removes his bandages to reveal the Megalon that now lives behind his left eye. An astonished Wow falls to her knees, begging him to take her back because diamonds don't mean anything to her if she doesn't have his love. The moment is interrupted by Hamilton, who is shocked to hear about the frozen accounts and promises to fix it, merely assuming it was a mistake on the paperwork. Some time later Wow and Claudio meet in private to do the dirty. Suddenly the lights start failing and Claudio explains it's caused by Caesar's systems using all the power. Then Wow reveals Hamilton asked for a prenuptial agreement and she can't get the bank, so she wants to work with Claudio to do a takeover. She even cuts his hair to make it look more presentable. The next time Claudio meets with Hamilton, the old man is proud to see his nephew looks more like an adult. Following the plan, Claudio asks to become interim CEO of the bank to help with the family business. Hamilton is glad to make Claudio actually work and quickly signs the papers, only to discover the contract makes Claudio true CEO and chairman. Hurt by this betrayal, Hamilton starts freaking out and has a heart attack. A few months later after the baby is born, Caesar and Julia get married in private during Saturnalia, which is this city's equivalent of Christmas. Claudio and Wow continue to work together and Claudio convinces the board to remove Hamilton from his position in the bank. Afterward Claudio gathers the rebels to start the biggest riot yet, which triggers multiple fires on the streets. The cops can't do much to stop them so after Cicero makes a public speech condemning the citizens' actions, he escapes in the subway with his wife, Julia, and the baby. Even while holding his granddaughter, Cicero keeps on insulting Caesar, but he wants the baby to have a good future so he finally agrees to support his son-in-law. Later that night Claudio and Wow check on a bedridden Hamilton, who has a bulge in his pants. At first he pretends he's excited to see Wow, but when he removes the bedsheets he reveals it's a bow and arrow. He shoots Wow in the heart to kill her and Claudio in his rear multiple times as he runs away. Then Hamilton announces he leaves all his fortune to Caesar's city project. Meanwhile Caesar appears in public and shares his vision of the future, explaining that his megalopolis utopia won't have classes. Even those that lived in the shadiest part of the city will have a chance to work in progress because every human being is a miracle. The crowd is touched by his words and realizes they've been fed lies by Claudio. Soon they find him and his henchmen and hang them for revenge. By New Year's Eve, the megalopolis project is complete. Caesar, Julia, and the baby join Cicero and his wife for the parade. While greeting the fans, Caesar is shocked to see his mother in the crowd. When the New Year's countdown reaches zero, Caesar and Julia kiss to stop time, but their daughter is not affected. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.